I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. At Wednesday's House Appropriations Committee hearing, Republican lawmaker Guy Reschenthaler proposed an amendment for the U.S. to stop funding the United Nations Human Rights Council Commission of Inquiry into Israel. The Appropriations Committee was holding a markup hearing on several bills, including foreign ops and State Department funding. The Pennsylvania Republican called out the U.N. Human Rights Council for its bias against Israel. His sentiment was shared by many in the committee, including Democrats. Take a listen to his fellow committee members' responses. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment is adopted. Are there further amendments? Mr. Reschenthaler? Thank you, Madam Chair. up again, the gentleman from Pennsylvania. I have an amendment at the desk, Reschenthaler Amendment Number 1, and I'd ask for unanimous consent to dispense with without, the reading. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with. The gentleman is recognized to speak on his amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. This amendment would prohibit funding for the UN Human Rights Council their bogus and baseless commission of inquiry into false allegations of human rights violations by Israel in the Gaza Strip in East Jerusalem. With the recent release of its first one-sided report, we saw the commission's efforts to delegitimize Israel in whitewash Palestinian terror organizations. This egregiously biased actions perpetuate a UN practice of unfairly singling out our ally Israel while refusing to hold actual bad actors accountable. Just for reference, the UN Human Rights Council does not even have a commission of inquiry into the clearly documented genocide China is committing against the Uyghur population, Uyghur population in Xinjiang. So let me be clear about this amendment and what it does not do. It does not propose cuts or reductions to the accounts that fund the United Nations and international organizations. Rather, this amendment ensures taxpayer dollars will not go to this highly controversial commission that has been roundly denounced by members on both sides of the aisle, as well as numerous senior officials from the Biden administration. I would urge a yes vote on this amendment, and I yield back. Well, Madam Chair, I rise in, uh, myself in opposition to this amendment. This committee has long supported Israel on a bipartisan basis and worked to prevent unnecessary amendments that politicize issues involving Israel. Unfortunately, this amendment does just that. It's not a constructive bipartisan proposal, but rather an effort to make Israel a wedge issue. Let me be clear about the facts. The United States recognizes and is working to stop the UN Human Rights Council's unfair and disproportionate focus on Israel and we support such efforts in the base SFOPS legislation, if you read our bill. But let's be honest about the fact that we do not contribute to any one activity or commission within the council. We pay in one lump sum through the United Nations regular budget. We cannot only pay for the things we support, such as the Commission on Inquiry about Russian or North Korean violation of human rights and stop paying for the things that we do not support. My colleague's amendment would end up reducing overall assessed dues to the United Nations and weaken our leverage as a council member who doesn't pay our fair share. It would not affect the work of the commission. Some have suggested that this amendment would not require cutting our support for the United Nations. We have confirmed once again that the State Department has indicated that the only way to implement this amendment is to reduce our payment to the United Nations. So as chair, I do not support any attempt to reduce our responsibilities and obligations at the UN. There are much more effective ways to address the council's work with our voice and our vote, and the base bill includes much of what we learned and included as a result of our hearing with Ambassador Thomas Greenfield. I yield. Mr. Rogers. I rise in support of this amendment. Uh, offered by our friend from Pennsylvania, which would ensure that the United States does not legitimize the so-called Commission of Inquiry of the United Nations Human Rights Commission. Madam Chair, despite a commitment by the administration to address a long and sordid history of anti-Israel bias at the UN Human Rights Commission, the Council is moving in the wrong direction by continuing these efforts through an expansive and deeply biased commission of inquiry investigating the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. 
Instead of unjustly targeting Israel, the Council would be better advised to investigate Communist China's ongoing genocide against Uyghur Muslims in China's Xinjiang province. Madam Chair, I agree with the State Department that we must firmly oppose the open-ended and vaguely defined nature of the UN Human Rights Council's Commission of Inquiry on the situation in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza, which represents one-sided biased approach that does nothing to advance the prospects for peace. End of quote. This amendment does just that. I urge a yes vote. I yield back. Are there other members wishing to be heard on the amendment? Ms. Washington Schultz. Thank you, Madam Chair. I thank the gentlelady for recognizing me and Chairwoman Lee for her continued partnership through this process. I also want to thank uh, Chairwoman Lee and Deloro for the fact that this bill is clear in its condemnation of the Commission of Inquiry and for its directive to the Secretary of State and the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations to continue to publicly denounce and work to reverse the disproportionate focus of the U.N. Human Rights Council on Israel, including the establishment of the unprecedented Commission of Inquiry to investigate Israel. The U.S. must stand unequivocally against the treacherous, open-ended COI to investigate Israel. Set up in May 2021, just days after Israel's defensive actions against cowardly terrorists who fired thousands of rockets at civilian targets, the COI decidedly ignored Hamas and Islamic Jihad's nefarious activities preceding and during that May conflict. The COI continues to discredit itself by publishing a report that shamefully blames Israel alone for the root causes of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and perpetuating it. The report intentionally distorts and minimizes the threats facing Israel, particularly violence by Hamas, which it refuses to label as a terror organization. Additionally, it neglects the countless instances in which the Palestinian Authority operated in bad faith at the negotiating table, including repeated incitement of violence against Israel and its civilians. The COI is unquestionably just another attempt by the United Nations Human Rights Council to unjustifiably target Israel. The Biden administration has rightly stood with our ally Israel and opposed the COI at every turn, while working to minimize its impact, including successfully negotiating to reduce its budget. I look forward to working with the administration and my colleagues on this committee to end this dangerous and appalling one-sided commission of inquiry. We must reform the Human Rights Council and remove Israel as the only country-specific permanent agenda item. It is long past time for the United Nations to end its long-standing bias against Israel. Let's instead work towards achieving peace for both Israelis and Palestinians and to support actions that bring the parties together to advance their prospects for peace. Thank you. I yield back the balance of my time. Ms. Meng. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I also want to thank Chairwoman Barbara Lee uh, for putting forth a bill that demonstrates our strong stance with our ally Israel and stand strong against the bias of the UN against Israel. And I rise in support of the gentleman's amendment. Following the release of the Commission of Inquiry's first report in June, my suspicions about the commission were confirmed. The Commission of Inquiry is nothing but another shameful and one-sided attempt to vilify Israel. Thus, in good conscience, I cannot support US tax dollars going towards the commission. However, I must also note that this amendment does nothing to dismantle the commission. That effort rests solely in the hands of our diplomats in New York. We know that the commission will be fully funded by the UN whether the US pays its assessed contribution or not. Let me be clear that I am 100% supportive of the US's full participation at the UN to ensure that we are at the table when important decisions like the establishment of an open-ended commission of inquiry on Israel are decided. Since returning to the Human Rights Council, which we acknowledge is a problematic body, the US has been able to reduce the commission of inquiry's overall budget by 25%. I look forward to continuing to work with Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield and the Biden administration to see through our priorities at the United Nations, including the dismantling of the Commission of Inquiry. I yield back. Ms. Frankel. Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. First, first, I want to say 
how pr proud I am that this committee has worked in a bipartisan way to advance some of the most critical issues for the United States foreign policy at a time when democracy is under threat around the globe. It's crucial that we affirm our, our support for democratic allies from Israel to Ukraine. And the, this bill just does that. It is proudly and unequivocally pro-Israel because the American people are also pro-Israel. And they recognize that support for Israel is not a charity, it's a strategic American interest. Israel's security threats are the same threats we face. Israel's technology advancements better our own lives here at home. Israel's immigrant absorbing, pluralistic, and democratic values are the same values we strive for our country. The security assistance we provide in this bill, the funding for people-to-people -people program to advance peace, the humanitarian support for the people in the region, all is in our own national interest, and I hope that we can always avoid temptation on both sides of the aisle to play partisan politics with our most important ally in the Middle East. As to this particular amendment, I have to just say, it is alarming that the United Nations General Assembly would approve an open-ended commission of inquiry to investigate Israel. The, C e the COI is yet another example of anti-Israel bias at the UN, which ignores Ham Hamas terror, uh, the Palestinian leadership refusal to accept the cr uh, peace agreements, including that Camp David. And, and instead, this, it just focuses entirely on Israel. And I, I, I salute the Biden administration because it has rightly con condemned this COI and called it what it is, a one-sided biased approach that nothing, does nothing to advance process for peace. And this amendment reiterates the amendment's efforts to abolish the commission and to reform the Human Rights Council so that the UN finally ends its longstanding bias against Israel. Thank you, and, and I yield back. If there is no further debate, the gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized to close. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's not too often that I would associate my remarks with Congresswoman Washington Schultz. I think that just shows you the power of the bipartisan nature of my amendment. So again, I just want to be clear that this amendment only prohibits funding for the Commission of Inquiry on Israel, not accounts for the UN uh, in, in general. So with that, I would urge adoption of my amendment. Thank you for the time, and I yield back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment is adopted. Are there further amendments?